in Vajrayana Buddhism, okay, especially in the Vajrayana Buddhism. Women is very special. They are actually, they represent wisdom and you know, in fact, one of the tantric, uh, what do you call it, mm, tantric vow or the tantric discipline. Tantra has like some really major discipline, if you, major vow. And if you break one of this vow, you will violate the tantric practice. And this, like, 14 fundamental tantric vow. And then the last one, the 14th, is if you look down at women, physically, verbally, conceptually, you, you will you know, break the budget in a vow. That's how it is in the Tantra. But do we practice that? I don't think so. Because then we choose to use another culture. We kind of conveniently not use this wisdom as our culture. We should actually. But then we should use some other culture. So therefore we have all Women can't go to, you know, the protector's room. Women who have menstrual, uh, you know, situation should not go to the temple. No such thing. But, no such thing in the sutras, no such thing in the shastras, but, you know, culture is so strong. Cultural habit is so strong. <coughs> so many times it really hijacks. Another example I give you. A Buddhist teacher in general, and uh, especially Vajrayana master, or the Vajrayana teacher. Anyway, the Buddhist teacher, they had to consider themselves as the healer, the doctor, and the teaching as the, what is it, medicine, and the student as the one who is ill, sick. So we need to have so the between teacher and the student have to have a really a very open discussion about their ups and downs, about their habit. It doesn't matter. They have to have this kind of exchange. Is that happening in Bhutan? I don't think so. Because the lamas are always sitting on the high throne. You guys are not even able to look at his eyes. You don't you don't openly talk to them about how you are thinking about having a sex change, you don't think about maybe you have a lesbian tendency or anything like that because it's a cultural taboo, so on and so forth. So how is doctor ever going to diagnose? Because the doctor is sitting on the throne and the, the patient is on the floor and the, the connection between the doctor and the student is very distant. These are all Cultural, culture hijacking the wisdom. But it's not going to go away easily because we ourselves, we feel that we are obliged and we are also afraid that people will criticize us, you know. This, this is the sort of the society that we have. I mean, yesterday when I was uh, invited by Russia, I asked uh, my staff to send the photo where I'm sitting and then they arranged a throne here. And then I sent a message to Russia saying, if you have a throne or a scarf, I'm not coming. <laughs> we have to like really negotiate like this. I totally have a sympathy with the organizers that they have to do it like this. Otherwise, all those Tonsa Kinsan will say, fine, they will bomb. You know, they will smash you. <laughs> <laughs> right? You imagine you went to the center of uh, for Bhutan uh, status and you didn't even offer a kada? What kind of people are you? You didn't put him in a throne? See, this is how culture hijacks wisdom. What do you do? So I guess. And. Uh, 
this is what I was telling you earlier, sometimes we can become so ridiculously obsessive with some of the culture which does not really serve our purpose. Something to think about, you as a thinker, you as a people who are in the think tank, you should really think about this one.